This is a reference sheet, as you can see right from, actually, yeah, right there, sort of, I was going to say right from the top, but it's there. You know, on the highlight, that's where it says what it is. These are all of the things which we're like, look, we know it's quite hard to remember all of these. You get handed this in your exams. Um, I printed it to you in exactly the form that you'll get it, except um, Nessa is slightly less cheap on paper. So you'll get this as an A4 booklet rather than A5 one, okay? <coughs> Just real quickly, turn to the very back. Okay. Now, on the very back, some of you are looking at that, your eyes are gradually widening. Um, don't freak out because all of that part of the reference sheet we won't ever have to use, but it's there because if you turn back to the front, this is not just a reference sheet for you, Mathematics Advanced. This is a reference sheet also for Mathematics Extension 1 and Mathematics Extension 2, some other people is the way I would say that. So all that stuff on the back page, we don't really need to worry about, but do open it up now and you can see um, you're assaulted with all of these different formulas and equations. And um, I'd love you to grab out a colour or a highlighter or something like that. And go over to the second of the four columns you can see in front of you. And hopefully, sort of uh, halfway down the second column, you should see a section. It's called probability. And underneath it, there's all this weird notation. You're like, what is all that? It's the stuff we've just been looking at. It's set notation. Okay. So I want you to highlight where it says probability. And um, before we unpack what's going on here, I do want to say, I encourage all of you, as we go through this, the reason I want you to keep this is, you should be sort of mentally ticking off as you learn some of this stuff. You're like, oh, okay, I've seen, I've seen this, and then I've seen this. Because if you are going to use this in your exams, if you're going to use this in your exams, you need to know where things are. There are going to be some students who feel like, oh, I know a bunch of these things well enough that I never have to look at this reference sheet. For example, if you look up the, um, come back to the front page. Um, if you have a look at something like, say, second column, top right hand corner, what is that? It doesn't tell you, but hopefully you recognize it from a couple of years ago and know what it is. A equals P, what is, what is that? What's it trying to work out? Gives you a clue with the heading. What formula is this? Say it again, sorry, without warning. It's compound interest, thank you very much. So this is a formula you've seen before. It's there just in case you forget it, but I hope by the time we get to the end of year 12, you guys are like, uh, I know that formula, I don't need to look it up. Okay. However, coming back to the inside, right? there's lots of stuff here which is designed because you're going to want to look it up, but don't spend time in an exam looking and hunting down for things. Okay, You don't have that time. But I'm highlighting for you now, okay, now you will know where the probability stuff is. Let's write down what it means. Okay, so you've got it highlighted, but in your book, let's write down the stuff that's there because there's not really enough space on the reference sheet to have all kinds of notes for everything. It's going to come very crowded very fast. So in your books, we'll have enough space to write and explain what's going on. So for starters, you can see that the first notation being used is P for probability of, and then they describe the thing. We have this right up on the board here, right? So how would you read that? Probability of what does this mean? Take it. What do you think A and B will indicate? Say it without it, circle B. Circle A, circle B. Circle A, circle B, if you had a Venn diagram, right? So it's like there's some events, A, eating an apple pie, or raining, or winning the lottery, right? And some event B, right? And what we want is what's the probability of both of them? happening together. That's what that intersection means. That's why we've had the word and, right? Okay, so what happens after that? What do they actually write? Have a look at the problem sheet. <coughs> it's the probability of what? A. a. And even though it's not written there, I'm going to ask you to write it out in your books, right? There's, a, um, there's an operation hiding between the two things that's kind of implied. What's the implied operation? It's multiplication. Now, I want us to write that down because it's an important distinction in our minds. Sometimes we add probabilities. Sometimes we add probabilities. But not when you want both of these events to happen simultaneously at the same time. Right? So if you want the probability of A and B together, right? what do you do? You Oops, that's a really messy one. <coughs> so, for instance, if you wanted to roll the dice, 
and flip a coin, and I wanted to know the probability of rolling a six and also and getting ahead, right? Flipping ahead, right? What's the probability going to be? Well, what's the probability of rolling the six? On a regular die, just one in six. And then the probability of flipping heads, that's going to be one out of two. So clearly, you're going to take one over six, multiply by one over two, and you get your answer up one over 12. Okay. Mrs. Lee. So just looking at this notation, you guys, do we see anywhere before, perhaps when it was minus and not Mr. Lose, where we <coughs> multiply the probabilities? Can anyone <coughs> remember what that was? The tree, the tree diagrams, when you have the probabilities written along them. So this is formalising what you've already done. So even though it looks really technical, you've already been doing this quite happily. It just helps sometimes when you've got the language and the notation to say it in an efficient way rather than using lots of words. As you can see, this is just much more efficient. Okay, are you okay with that first slide on the reference sheet? Yeah, could we move on to the second one? What does it say? This should really, really look familiar, right? Like, in fact, we almost have exactly this, almost, on the board. It says the probability of, and then how do you read that when you see that symbol? A or, or, right? I, I'm, I'm interested in either of them happening, right? A or B. And then there's, my goodness, there's a mess there, but does it look familiar? Does it look like anything you've already written? Have a look on your page, right? Does it look a heck of a lot like this? Because it's that same idea. Right? It's like, if you're okay to have one or the other, right? we take one, there you go, we can add them because they can happen separately, they don't happen to have, have to happen together because it's not and, it's or, so you add them. But if you take these two probabilities, what you've done is you have double counted, right? you see we're double counted, so you actually have to remove when you've got both of them because you counted that twice. So you can see the probability of a intersection. Does that make sense? Um, real quick, just so again, you, you ground this in something concrete, right? Remember I told you about um, rolling the die and flipping the coin? Just underneath here, before we do the last, the third and last one, right? Suppose we represented this on an array, okay? So if I wanted to do flipping a coin, what are the two options that I could have? Heads and tails, and then rolling a die. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Okay, so when we think about this guy here, right? Do you remember what our solution was? It was one out of two for flipping your head, multiplied by one out of six for, oh, sorry, one out of six for rolling a six. Does that make sense? So we would say one option out of 12. Okay, now think about this. What if I said rolling a six or flipping a head? What would that option be? Here's looking ahead. So what's the probability there? It's six out of twelve. So that's that's a half right there. And then I would say that's the probability of A. Uh, probability of B, that's probability of flipping a sorry, I said the wrong way around. That's rolling flipping ahead. And then rolling a six now. What's the probability? You told me this before, right? When we were watching. <coughs> it's one out of six, right? One out of six because it's two out of twelve. Do you agree with that? So I would add one out of six. But look what I've got in there in orange. Do you see that? See what I've got there in orange? Do you see how I've double counted that in my green thing? I've counted it once in the row and once in the column. So that's why you have to subtract, right? And we get one over twelve. Can someone go ahead and calculate that? I'd actually like to see if you can see if you can heard it. Get an answer out. I'm not asking you to do all the, even though it's not that hard, you can get all the comments and all that. Go ahead, chuck it in. And let's see if that matches what your intuition would have said if you worked this out just through an array. What do you get when you calculate? 7 over 12. Seven over 12. Have a look at the diagram. Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 out of 12 central space. So you see how it's just formalizing what you've got here? Now in this situation, of course, you could just look at the diagram rather than doing that calculation. But when we're giving you a much more complicated situation where the diagram is not simple, you can see how this is really going to rescue you. Okay. Last one down there on the bottom, I'm going to do this over here. You can write it down first and then we will write an explanation for it. Thank you. Probability. 
do it next. Yeah, we're doing it next. Okay, well, I'm just going to write it, and um, we will come back to it shortly. It looks like this. Um, this vertical line here, this vertical line, um, it's about conditions, right? So it's like, what will happen? What's the probability of getting something so long as you have some other condition that's being filled? Like I said, we'll come into this a little more later. This is the thing I really wanted to focus on because it's the set notation which we just had a look at. What would this indicate? Well, tell me what the top line means. <coughs> probability of A and B. A and B, this is what we just looked at before, right? So like, oh, you're going to have to multiply those two together. And then what you're going to divide by is the probability of just this event, because as shorthand, what we're talking about here, this B, is the condition that you know. So it changes your sample space, it makes it smaller. Okay? Like I said, we'll look into more detail about that later, but this is so that you know why we're doing this set notation. Um, you could say this in words, it's just so much more long and inefficient. 